This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Yeah, he is. He comes back and works in Vancouver for Al Tomko's NWA All-Star Wrestling. He starts out as a babyface, but later turns heel. And he's managed by a name that I, even I have to admit, I'm not familiar with. Gentleman Jonathan Sayers. Do you know anything about Gentleman Jonathan Sayers? I do not. I have no idea. I want to say I thought it was Jim Holiday, but I don't really know. Maybe one of our listeners out there is going to do their research and come back and go, hey, Bruce, you dumbass. Yeah. Talk to me please about. Don't, please don't do that. I'm sensitive, okay? He comes into the company, the WWF, in March of 89 and wrestles two matches under his real name. And he joins full time in September of uh, 89. And we'll talk about how all that comes to be. But who would have sort of been the scout or the liaison to put Tenta on you guys' radar in early 89? Well, um, I believe that they received some tapes and some promos and different things from John. But I think it was Bret Hart originally who mentioned Tenta and Pat saw him, Pat and Vince saw him and brought him in for this tryout. And upon seeing his size and the way that he could move, Tenta could move for a big man and was very agile. And they put him in the ring for a tryout. Tenta killed it. We should mention March of 89, Hulkamania is still running wild in a big way. And for years and years, the formula had been a quote unquote heel factory, whether it's a Bam Bam Bigelow or a King Kong Bundy or an Andre the Giant or a Nakeem or a big boss man. We need a big hulking individual, pardon the pun, to challenge Hulk Hogan and take that big boot and the leg drop and tend to checks all those boxes. Does he not? Yes, he does. He was a big, strong, menacing heel that. Hulk could overcome his first match after signing in September of 89 happens on September 21st, where he wrestles as a lumberjack character named earthquake Evans and was billed as being from the Northern Yukon territory. He's managed by slick before eventually defeating Paul Roma. This is not the way we're going to remember his debut. Instead, that's going to happen. On the November 11th edition of superstars, it's an in-ring segment with Dino Bravo and the intercontinental champion at the time, the ultimate warrior, John is seated in the crowd and was randomly chosen by mean Gene and Bravo's manager, Jimmy Hart to sit on Bravo's back during a push-up contest with the ultimate warrior. And of course he sits right down on the world's strongest man, Dino Bravo and Dino pops out these pushups. No problem. Here comes the ultimate warrior. Now Tenta's is going to sit on his back and instead he jumps on his back and they all jump him and ta-da earthquake is now a character. John Tenta has a gig here, but that wasn't the original idea. What can you tell us about this lumberjack version of earthquake earthquake Evans from the Northern Yukon territory and managed by slick. That was just something that we tried and put out there for a tryout to say, Hey, does this work? Yes or no. And Hulk saw him and Hulk was like, Hey, fuck man, there's, there could be money in that big bastard. The first time that that you saw him on TV, the other, the other important part that was so, when you look back on it, it's funny when people watch it, they go, Oh my God, there's earthquakes sitting in the audience. Yeah. Because we sat him directly across from the hard cameras. Right. So that he would be in damn near every shot. Well, he wasn't every hard camera shot. But after a while, you know, you watch it later and you realize, man, he's right in the middle of every friggin' shot. And it was just a nice little subtlety until it was time for him to come on down. You know, earthquake, come on down. But. It was a way to introduce him. You bring him in, you bring him in on top and put him with the ultimate warrior. So it was a good way to debut him and a good way to, to get him rolling with things because people didn't expect it and they bought it because he walked in the front door. He was smiling and laughing with everybody and just being a big fan to the, to the crowd that night, they were in shock. 
It really is one of the cooler ways I've ever seen a character debuted. I mean, even when he climbs in the ring, I just randomly happened across this because the network just uploaded a bunch of old episodes, um, from November's, uh, primetime wrestling from 89. So I managed to just randomly select the one where his, uh, debut was covered and man, it's, it's beautifully done. He comes down the stairs, crosses the guardrail, climbs in, is having a conversation with Mean Gene, just like you would imagine a fan would. He introduces himself as John from West Virginia. And uh, they ask him how much he weighs, and he says, you know, 440 pounds or whatever. And we're off to the races. It was just a phenomenal way to debut the character. Of course, we know he's going to become known as the Canadian Earthquake, and he is going to be managed by Dino Bravo's manager, Jimmy Hart. Ultimately, why was Jimmy a better fit for Earthquake than Slick, do you think? Because of the at the time, the Dino Bravo connection and the Bravo issue with Ultimate Warrior, and that's kind of where they were, and it was a way for Earthquake to come in and learn at the teat of one Dino Bravo. Really, really fun stuff here. During, you know, somewhere in this time frame, too, there was a really horrible, tragic earthquake that took place. Um, I know there was one in San Francisco, but there was another one somewhere. I don't know if it was Mexico or Peru or I. Somebody's going to tell me what an idiot I am for not knowing, but I don't remember. And a little bit of that, we had to kind of back off on Mm. the earthquake character. I got gotcha. you. Because to that audience, it was it was offensive that we have a guy jumping around as the earthquake and squashing people when so many people had just experienced this horrible natural disaster. And you know, the, when tornadoes would come through, they didn't want Brock doing the F five because. That's how they, if an F5 tornado came through, it was like, let's do something else. Just try to be a little bit sensitive to those things. And, and there was a point somewhere in here where we had to cool earthquake off a little bit. Just so people wouldn't be going, oh, WWE is promoting an earthquake. Hmm. Very kabuki-ish. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.